Hello there everybody. This is Wanda with What's Up Wanda and today we are going to chat with Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller is somebody that I met while at the Arnold Expo inside the Pump Clubhouse. Sometimes you never know who you're going to meet. So many interesting people. But anyway, we talked with Kevin. That's him there. He is an army vet and has been in the school systems as an educator for many, many years. And this is his book, No Power, No Responsibility, How to Unleash the Potential of Every Child in America. So let's give a listen. Are you local? I am not local, but I was told I'm not Donna local. Toes. Donna Toes is a good place to go, and that's what we have. Well, I was going to tell you, order yourself a couple pieces, and I'll pay for them. You guys get some lunch. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. Wow, that's so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin. No, no. <laughs> okay, tell us about your book. Tell us who you are. Yes. And um, I'm going to film you. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm Kevin Miller. That's me. So we're going to do it on the page. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So hold on, hold on. know your power, no responsibility. How to unleash the potential of every child in America by Kevin Miller. And that'd be you. Oh, Very good. Gosh, I got three, three cameras going here. Yep. All right, so here we go. This is your girl SJ here with Real Beauty, Real Food, and Real Life. And here today we have Kevin Miller here. Mm-hmm. And he's going to tell us about his, book. his book. And I am What's Up, Wanda? So, so the, the book is about reinventing... K-12 education. Um, so I spent, I had just retired after 37 years in the Army. Nice. Um, Great. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Yep. Uh, and I, a few years back, stopped working full-time after 30 years working in public education. And, um, and the combination helped me develop some uh, understanding about why we have so many problems in our schools today. Right. Um, and it's not, it, the, the problem at, at the heart of it is, we're using a system that was designed literally in the 1890s yes. to try to prepare generations of people to live in the 21st century and beyond. Mm-hmm. And we've never changed the basic model of education, which is you start kids in an age cohort at about five years old, mm-hmm. and then you keep them in the age cohort and deliver curriculum to them over the course of the next 12 years. And really, even the four-year college degree isn't a whole lot different. It's all scripted, it's all, you know, here's the course you take to get this degree. So what happens is we've taken all the power over their learning away from kids. And we all did the same thing. We went through the same oh, yeah. thing oh, yeah. mm-hmm. from the time. And so we all learned to walk and talk. Nobody taught us to walk and talk. We learned that on our own, Right. Mm-hmm. okay? And, um, but what happens is, and, and you continue to learn. You learn all these incredible things from the time you're born right up until, you know, well, until you die. You're continually learning. Yeah. But about age five, and often even earlier, by age three, we're putting kids in preschool. We say, okay, instead of letting you just learn, we're going to become, in, we're going to take away the power to learn how you do it. Okay. So we mm-hmm. still want you to learn, but we're going to tell you how it works. So come in, yep. sit down, shut up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And while you're sitting there, we're going we're gonna to deliver information to you. Right. And good teachers, they figure out a way around that. Yes. But the problem is, once you take the power away and you have to do something, and that's true for all of us, right up through our whole life, when you take away our power, we get stressed. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, if we live in a good place, a safe place, people that love us, around us mm-hmm. and stuff, we can live with not having power all the time. So that's why kids who are in, in a good place, Mm-hmm. They, they can they can they get good at compliance mm-hmm. even though they're not in charge of themselves because they have all kinds of opportunities when they're not in school to use their creativity to learn about things that are important to them correct but as soon as you take kids who are in a, a stressful situation where they don't mm-hmm. have power outside of school either right. because they they're they're yeah. in a food desert um, they're right. living in poverty they're mm-hmm. living in a crime infested area, area right. things, things like that they're stressed all the time Right. And what happens in your brain, okay, so as soon as you are stressed, your ability to learn starts to shut down. Mm-hmm. And your emotions kick in, and, and you get, so it becomes very difficult to learn. So what do we do? We put kids in school. We take away their power. We stress them out because they don't have power. And then we say, you got to learn. Right. Mm-hmm. And so the more you struggle to learn, the more your stress level goes up, and the harder mm-hmm. it is to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And our brains all develop at a different rate. Yes. So we don't, you know, so some kids at age three yep. are ready to learn math and reading. 
-hmm. Some kids aren't ready to learn math or reading until they're six, seven, eight years old. The yeah. brain hasn't developed at that point yet. Yep. So all those things are happening at the same time and we're taking away all that power. So by giving the power back to the kids, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can actually get them to become responsible for their own learning. Mm -hmm. Just like they did when they were born mm -hmm. and all the way up until we took that power away from them. Yep. And the kids who have the opportunities continue to learn even after they get older because they have it outside of school. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I will continue this because you guys got some work to do. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. But, this is good. Uh, this is good, really good. I really appreciate it. All right, so... Um, so your book addresses that. So the then. book addresses that. So it, it right. looks at all the problems we have in schools. It's the mm -hmm. first part of the book is all about... Okay, so all the problems we have. Absenteeism. Right. Um, uh, achievement gaps. Behavior problems. Right. Classroom management. Mm -hmm. All that could be addressed by changing the way we do it. Instead of, instead of putting kids in age cohorts and moving them through the factory model of schools, which right. is what we use, we say, okay... We're going to put you in charge of your own education. So, and it sounds like we're, you know, we're going to put the inmates in charge of the asylum, right? Right. Okay? Because we think we can't give kids that much power. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can. Mm -hmm. We do it all the time. Okay. But we don't do it in school because we have to be efficient. And so, when we're trying to be efficient, we can't be effective. Yeah. But if we put the kids in charge of themselves, mm -hmm. okay. So we say, okay, you're going to figure out what you're going to learn and we're going to help you guide them the adults are going to help you figure out what you should be learning but we're going to give you a lot of freedom in that right okay so we're still going to say look math reading literacy those are important skills but we're going to put you in charge of that right okay um and so you figure out what you're going to learn uh-huh you figure out how you're going to learn it so how do you think is the best way for you to learn these things that you're and trust me you could do this with five-year-olds because we do it all the time we just don't do it with stuff that we consider important as adults yeah so five-year-olds they, they get in charge of themselves all the time mm -hmm. okay unless you got helicopter parents who sometimes <laughs> overstuff a little bit. but you say what you're going to learn how you're going to learn it you're going to tell me how you're going to demonstrate it okay mm -hmm. so when you've learned it how are you going to show me that you've learned it and okay. what's a, demonstrate so what's your assessment mm -hmm. so instead of giving them a test mm -hmm. okay paper pencil or right. we tell them how to we, you tell me how you're going to demonstrate to me that you've mastered this mm -hmm. okay um, and then we're going to you figure out what your timeline is for when you're going to do that mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and that allows flexibility for all of the things that we now take that power away from them so what you're going to learn, how you're going to learn it, how you're going to demonstrate it, and then what the timeline is. And throughout the whole time, instead of having teachers who are up there, you know, like right now I'm, I'm teaching you because you're, you're curious about this topic. Right. Okay, so you can listen and that's great, okay? Mm -hmm. But if I said, oh, hey, let's change sub subjects. Let's talk about algebra, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. <laughs> You'd be like, okay, I... You can talk now. Maybe you're you. Maybe you're like uh, my son would probably be like algebra. Sure, let's go. Yeah, I'm algebra. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm yeah. I like but, algebra. But so if I pick the right topic, mm -hmm. right, you, you you can listen and learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if I'm telling you what it is you got to learn, it becomes very difficult. So mm -hmm. we put you in charge of it. And once you're in charge, okay. So we what we don't understand. What we often get confused about. Mm -hmm. And I like I said, I spent I spent 30 years in K-12 education. I started as a classroom teacher. I was Very a nice. middle school and high school principal. Mm -hmm. I worked for our State Department of Public Instruction in Wisconsin mm -hmm. for, for about 13 years, mm -hmm. overseeing statewide programs and, and development of new programs. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was, we always say, oh, we give homework to teach responsibility. Okay, we put kids yeah. in charge of stuff to teach responsibility. Right. And then we say, well, if kids would just be responsible, and we do that with adults too, well, if they would just be responsible. Well, the reality is you cannot be responsible for something over which you don't have power. Mm -hmm. Right, true. And we don't usually think about that. So no. when we tell kids, hey, you're responsible for getting your homework work done. Mm -hmm. Did they choose to do that homework? Did they ask, I want that class, I want to go to school, I want to, no. So no. what happens with school, homework, all the stuff we talk about, it's negotiations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the big difference. Now, with most kids, we can negotiate pretty good. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you grades, in exchange for you getting your work done. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, if it was like the middle school I worked at, well, you do your work done and you're well behaved and you do what you're expected of you, we'll give you a reward at the end of each quarter. Right. We have a right. reward day. Yep. And as long as you do everything right, you get to go on reward day. Mm -hmm. But if you misbehave, you don't have your grades where they need to be, the consequences you miss reward day. So it's a negotiation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and and I was a middle school assistant principal, which means I was in charge of all the kids who got in trouble, right? <laughs> you know? Now I love those kids. Yeah. Those and they were the smartest, brightest, most creative yes. kids in the school, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why they were felt so trapped and they got in trouble because they had all right. their power taken away, so they got creative on how am I gonna exercise my power? Right. Ooh, this teacher over here, I know how to set him off, push his yep. buttons. Mm -hmm. And and you know what? I don't care about those consequences. Mm -hmm. I don't care about those rewards. Yep. So I'm good. My negotiation is I'm just gonna get in trouble. And yep. you try to figure out something that's gonna keep me from getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because there's really nothing you got over me. Yeah. And so that's when we start to say, well, if we just get those kids out of school and we get you know and those are the kids that we get into trouble for. Yeah. You know, those are the ones who well you put those kids in charge of themselves. Mm -hmm. You make them, you say, this is what you're responsible for. You will also see that they will, they'll, they'll take advantage of that. Yes. They will grasp that. I, like I said, I watched, I it saw. Empowers it, it, it empowers them. It empowers them. It empowers mm -hmm. them. And actually my book is even dedicated to a kid. I feel so bad because um, uh, he was one of the kids in my, my middle school. And I, I, I loved him, JJ. He was mm -hmm. just this, this sweet kid mm -hmm. but he he didn't fit in mm -hmm. we had no good options for him so he got through school and eventually he ends up he graduates and he and his buddies are getting in trouble all the time mm. um and at about er, in his early 20s he's dead oh okay. that's a shame now, it died at home you know was the thing mm. but i know it was one or two things he was either suicide okay, okay, okay. Oh, or wow. it was drugs. Yep. Because he had lost all power and control over his life. Yep. And so he was just looking for something that he had control over. Which and suicide is one of those things that a lot of people turn yeah. to when they have no other power. That's sad. Because that's something they have power over. Right. Right. And it's like, man, I I'm I feel yeah, so lost. Yep. So um, and and as a soldier, as a as a um, service member. Right. I know that is a lot of what service members and veterans go through too. Yes, is yes, that a lot loss of veterans of power will. And control. And when they were in the military, yes. even though they turned themselves over to the military, they did that voluntarily. So they yes. felt part of that, and they often felt yeah. that that. And you feel that camaraderie when you're in the and like Absolutely. I was in the Air Force. So yeah. Oh yeah. So Absolutely. you feel that immediately, and even yes. afterwards when you meet a fellow serviceman, yep. you're getting that yep. again, and you're getting that affirmation when you meet them. But a lot of them don't. No, they don't. And that's don't. why we have such a high suicide rate among Right. Them. So, so this book is all about, so it, it talks about, um, I actually, it's in four parts. The first part is here's all the problems this could address, all the challenges yes. that are exist because of the model of school we have. Right. And then the second part is, okay, we're going to do something different. What would it look like? Because it's, when we say put kids in charge, well, what would that mm -hmm. look like? Because <laughs> all of us, what we still think of a classroom. Yeah. A mm -hmm. school with classrooms, teachers, <laughs> delivering curriculum, or at least, you know, directing kids from right. subject to subject. And, you know, so what would it look like if we said, we're going to take a whole community and we're going to put the kids in charge of their own learning? Mm -hmm. So it's an, it's an example of this is what this would look like for, from kids from kindergarten cool. mm -hmm. up through graduation. Nice. And then um, the third part so is, think, here's think all more, right? of the tools mm -hmm. that, you know, here's the process for doing it. Right. And then it's kind of like a, a help how to do it. So it, it oh, actually walks awesome. you through the entire process. If I'm living in a community and I say, okay, we want to try this. Right. Because here's the other thing. You can't legislate this new model. <laughs> okay. You can't say from the federal or state government, here's what it's going to look like. Right. Because okay? again, I worked in schools for years. Yeah. And I worked at the state level and we would say, man, this school is doing incredible things. They've closed achievement gaps. Yep. Their kids, their scores have all skyrocketed. Let's take what they did and do it everywhere. Okay. So there's this, yep. we always talk about bring it to scale. Mm -hmm. You can't. And the reason is Every school and community is different. They're unique. Right. They have their own challenges. Yes. They all have their own strengths and resources. Yep. And so what they need differs. And they have different staff. They have different people. Mm -hmm. So they have to create their own model. Okay. For And they have to define what should it look like for our community. Right. So the basic model is still put the kids in charge. Mm -hmm. But what it would look like 
is different everywhere. Right. So they would tailor it to what their community needs Absolutely. and everything. Yeah. And and it, and it, and it's it could be so empowering when you do that. And I raised my own kids much like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is really interesting. My wife was like, nah, she's very traditional. <laughs> um, so we were often not on the same sheet of music, but right. we cooperated and we collaborated. That's good. And as far as I, I got two incredible boys who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like, I couldn't ask for them anything better out of them. Nice, nice. So, um, so I, I am really, and I, so I wrote this um, a few years ago, and then I got, then the army sucked me in for <laughs> about four years. Um, so I actually am hoping to collaborate on a book with Arnold and Adam and Eric uh, oh, that, and Daniel. Daniel, yeah, that'd um, be great. Nice. To fo do a, almost a follow up. I actually started. Yes. The book is already in the works. Um, but it, it would be a great companion to it would, be useful. With his, and not only that, with his after-school special, that and his after-school after school programs yes. that he does, oh, yeah. yes. Well, and even, so, I, so I'm from Wisconsin, which is where Arnold started his Special Olympics journey. Oh, that's awesome. That's where he first had the opportunity to do Special Brilliant. Olympics work. And mm -hmm. he was just, he got so excited about it. So, yes. So I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to him, guys. Well, that would be great. I wish you all the best with that. Yeah.